Today I'd like to show you some of the instruments I have here. Normally they're in my classroom out on the unpitched instrument table, but this year they got shoved in the storage room, along with a little gecko that decided to come live with me in my classroom. <laughs> but I decided to bring some of them home and be able to share them with everyone, not just that little gecko. Before I start sharing them with you, I want to talk to you about the different families that these instruments belong to. Now these are all considered unpitched instruments. That means you can play a rhythm on them, but you can't really play the melody of a song because they are unpitched. They have different pitches, but not something like a piano or a xylophone. You can play different pitches. So the families, there's four families. One is the wood family. Two is the metal, three is shaker scraper, and four is the drum family. So let's start with the wood family. The wood instruments I have are rhythm sticks. They're made out of wood and we just tap them. Right. A lot of times I like my um, students to just keep the beat on it. All right, we sometimes keep the beat other places but to hear the true wood sound, you'd have to hit them together. Now, a version of a better version of that are claves. And so here, claves are just like rhythm sticks, but uh, they're made a little nicer wood. And the way you want to play them is not to just hold them tightly and hit them together. It's kind of a thud sound, not as nice as it can be. So what I tell my students is make a, ha a hot dog bun with your hand and then place this stick, this clave or the hot dog in the bun like this. And then when you hold this one, you want to hold it loosely and now tap. Isn't that a much nicer sound? So here it is when you're holding tightly. Okay, it doesn't really ring as well. So you hold it correctly. That makes a much nicer sound. So these are called claves. Here's a homemade wood instrument. <laughs> Coconut shells. <laughs> so yeah. They're made of wood. And I bought this uh, coconut at a grocery store and got uh, to it cut in half and scooped out the white meat in the middle. And then now I have coconut shells to play. I love playing them. If you ever need an instrument sounding like a horse, you can play any rhythm you want. Okay, so those are coconut shells. Let's move on to the metal family, all right? So, pretty basic one is the triangle. See that? A lot of times my students um, play it and they hold it like this. They go, Miss Davis, this is broken, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, the correct way to play it is you hold it by the loop. This one actually has a ball on there. You can hang on to that so that your hand is not touching the actual triangle. All right. And then when you're holding the striker, um, you want to hold it. This one has a wood handle. Not all of them do. And you're just going to tap the inside of that triangle like this. Much nicer than this. It's broken. <laughs> So you just want to hold on to the string and tap in the middle. If you try tapping on the edge, then you end up chasing it. And then when it unwinds, it's even harder to play. Okay, so <laughs> just try holding it and up high and then playing that middle part. So that's part of the metal family, the triangle. Now, I've got two cousins here. These are called agogo bells, all right? And they're from uh, Latin America. And if you notice, one bell is smaller than the other. I don't have the proper striker, but this will work for now. So when you play the top, the smaller bell, is that higher or lower sounding than this one? If you said higher, you are right. The smaller the bell, the higher the sound. The bigger the bell, the lower the sound. Now, 
Now, I told you it had a cousin, right? So these are called the go go bells. Its cousin is called Goncogui bells, all right? And look it, this is just like the go go bells, has the small bell up here and the big bell down here. So, same thing. You think this is going to be higher or lower? right just like the go-go bells all right so we have the high pitch up here low pitch down here <laughs> okay all right a little different sound same concept and when I took my class on drumming uh, I also bought this this is also from uh, Africa and I don't even remember the name of it. And I know when I did find the name of it, I could, I could never remember it. But I know how to play it. You're going to loop this over one of your fingers. And then you're going to put this, this is actually just a nut, okay? And you're going to put that on your thumb. And then you just tap them together. <laughs> okay? So this doesn't work very well on little fingers, but it works great on adult fingers. Let's move on over to our shaker scraper family, maybe one of my favorite. So uh, this little guy here is looks like a grasshopper or a cricket. And uh, if you notice that there's bumpy edges right along here. So I just take the striker and I rub against it. doesn't matter which side. If I do this, it doesn't make any sound hardly. But I rub around the bumpy side and it makes a fun little cricket sound. All right? So that's this little guy. Now, a bigger version than that is this Wero. Okay? Uh, I bought this a long time ago. Unfortunately, one of my students dropped it, so it has cracks right here. But you know what? It still seems to work. So a Wero, you play it using your thumb and your index finger, and you put both of them inside the holes, and so you're actually pinching inside the Wero, okay? That's how you're gonna hold it sturdy, okay? It's not gonna go anywhere. And then you take your striker, which unfortunately I don't have with me right now, so I'm just gonna use this chopstick, it works. <laughs> and you can just scratch its back. Like that, okay? Maybe you wanna use the fatter end. Different sound, right? Smaller, higher pitch, bigger end, lower pitch, and louder, right? Okay, so that's the Wero. Now, here's another shaker scraper instrument, and this is called a shaker ray. And uh, in Africa, uh, you can find they will use seashells to weave in between, and then they hit this gourd inside it and makes a nice sound. Okay, so it's shake or scrape because you're shaking, I guess. <laughs> These are shaking against the um, gourd and makes a really fun sound. Notice I'm hitting my leg, but then I'm also hitting the palm of my hand on the way up. It gives you a different kind of rhythmic feel. All right, so uh, here's another one, uh, the tambourine. I just bought this tambourine. I realized I didn't own a tambourine. And so uh, I just bought this one last month, actually this month. And uh, anyways, you'd say, well, Miss Davis, it's got wood. It should be in the wood family, but no, it has metal, metal family. No, it's in the shaker scraper because we shake it. All right, so you could play it like this. I like to have, I'm going to do a real rhythm, then I just tap it with my one hand. Okay, but you certainly can take it like that. Depends what, what you're doing with your music. Now, here is another one in the shaker scraper, and it's called a Viber Slap. Okay, now look at that. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to hold this end because if you try and uh, hold down here and hit this ball, it doesn't do much of anything except fall over. <laughs> okay? Or if you hold it here and put it on your leg just to give it some stability, 
same thing. It, it's not going to make any sound much. So what you need to do is hold it in the air and then you bop this ball with your hand like this. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? And what's happening, you hit this and it goes all the way through the vibrations until it gets to this part here. And you've got little metal pieces that can go up and down hitting the wood to make that sound. All right, so I don't know if you can see it. We'll try it. I'll try it one more time. Okay, so that's called a vibra slap. I've also, I've also seen other people play upside down like this. I think they hit on their leg. Um, I just always play it this way. That's the way it works for me. Here's another instrument that is from the Shaker Scraper family. And it's called a flexitone. <laughs> if you want a real noisy instrument, this is the one. Doesn't look very noisy, does it? Well, these little things here shake and they hit this metal like here. Almost sounds like an alarm clock, right? Or a telephone. <laughs> well, it's called a flexitone for a reason. When you take your thumb and move it up and down, it changes the metal and changes the pitch. Listen. perfect Halloween instrument, right? <laughs> so you just move it up and down. This is kind of tough for my little friends, but for older friends, um, third through fifth grade, uh, a lot of them can do this, okay? So. so that's called a flexitone, shaker scraper family. And I think that's it. Oh, wait a minute. No, we have this right here, okay? So this is just a tube, an empty tube, and it has a thin um, material right here. Feels like plastic. And then this long spring, all right? That's it, that's all there is to this, all right? An empty tube with a spring attached. Watch what happens when I shake it. something that sounds like maybe thunder right and it even has lightning on it so this is called a thunder tube can you, it's crazy how much noise it can make just from a spring and an empty tube let's try it one more time <laughs> pretty cool so when I do a rainstorm in my classroom, you can bet that a lot of students are waiting to be called to play this at the end. And unfortunately, I only have two, so only two children get to be the lucky ones to play it. I actually have a bigger one at my school that's even deeper and louder. And that brings us to our final family, which is the drum family. So I have a diff few different drums here. I have more at my school, uh, but I told you I had a lot of drums in my last lesson. So this one I bought in Jamaica, and uh, if I ever forget, it says right there too. <laughs> and uh, this is called a djembe. Can you say djembe? And this djembe uh, is, looks like kind of like an hourglass, and it has the um, drumming material up here. And um, usually I like to sit down when I do this, but just today for demonstrating, I'm just gonna stick it between my knees like I would if I was sitting. And then I'm just gonna play on the edge. I'm gonna play like from here up to my fingertips, okay? I'm not just gonna play with my fingertips. I'm gonna play from here up, all right? And it just goes like this. So when I sit down, it doesn't try and fall over. So anyways, this is the djembe. Here's a, another, here's a baby djembe. Look how cute it is, all right? <laughs> Much smaller sound, right? And then over here, I have a talking drum 
from Africa. All right. I did not go to get this one. This one came across the to the United States for me to buy it. But you can tell that inside it looks like an hourglass, right? So it's fatter over here, it gets narrower, and then bigger up at the top, all right? And you can play either side, okay? Both of them have skin on them. And then this has all these strings that's connected to the top on both sides, all right? And then look at the mallet. It's actually curved. So I don't know how they got wood to curve, but they did. And then uh, they wrap it in some twine and then it's got a flat head right a flat head right here so if i'm playing it i put it under my arm now i have not um, played this very much so i'm no expert at this but i can show you the general idea how you play it okay so this is an instrument that um, older kids would be able to play because it takes some coordination with making your arm come down and out and playing the the top too so I want you to think about this. If I am squeezing the strings down, they're tightening the skin and pulling it down. Do you think the pitch is going to go up or go down? Hmm. What do you think? So if I play it loose, like I'm barely holding on to it, listen to it. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep doing that, and I'm going to t pull down on my arm so I'm tightening the strings. Let's see what happens. Did you hear that? Did it go up or down? Listen one more time. It went up, didn't it, all right? So if I loosen it, it'll go down, right? So let me start with tight. That's right. So you can make different pitches. Even though you're not really playing a song, you still can change the pitch. Okay, so this is called a talking drum. So um, I would love to see somebody who really knows how to play it and just mesmerize me with their skill and ability to be able to play the rhythm up here and then change the pitch with their arm. Now, at school, I have a set of conga drums and a pair of bongos, and uh, they're going to stay in my uh, storage room for a little longer. <laughs> and I also have some tabanos. But today, I just want to end this segment with showing you the frame drums, okay? So these are different sizes. Um, I think uh, there's one that's like this big, and that's really cool. And so uh, frame drum, this is how you play it. You hold out your hand that you don't write with and you make a shelf and then you put that drum on your shelf and then you put your thumb on top like this okay so now my drum is sideways to me okay it's not flat okay and it's just right out in front of me now you can either use your hand your writing hand that you can play again you don't want to just use your fingertips you want to use more of your fingers Make sure you bounce off of it because if you just land flat okay then you really end the sound abruptly now sometimes you might want that sound but most of the time we want to bounce off or you can use a mallet so these are a couple of my mallets and uh, normally we use these on xylophones but this works really well on uh, drums too right the mallet makes one sound and your hand holy a whole different sound okay all right all right those are the instruments i wanted to share with you today remember the four unpitched instrument families one the wood family two metal three shaker scraper and four the drum family hey if you learned something today hit that like button and if you want go ahead and put your favorite instrument in the comments section and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I will see you next time. Bye.